Hey kids, it's the Biston Fly here and you find me in Watford and that means I'm riding something interesting again. And today this is something super cool because I'm very lucky in that I'm the first person in the country to ride this new bike from Mondial, an Italian manufacturer. This bike is uh, a super cool little, uh, well it's not even a retro but it's kind of a calf racer but with a modern spin. It's only a 125 but uh, I think you're going to be impressed with this bike. So stick around, stay tuned, and I'll show you what the uh, Mondial Hipster is like. So if you've never heard of uh, Mondial before, they are one of those brands that's been around for decades in Italy. Uh, in fact, they started making production motorcycles in 1948, uh, where they were pretty successful, actually, in the racing scene. I think they got 10 Grand Prix titles under their belt. Uh, and then they ceased production, I think, in about the 70s for road bikes. Uh, and there's been sort of attempts to restart the brand ever since. But uh, this is the most serious attempt yet uh, with this particular motorcycle. As I say, it's unfortunately named the Hipster, which maybe doesn't work very well in this country. But uh, my goodness me, it is a hip looking little bike. So what I'm going to do is stop up here and show you around the bike. And I think uh, you're going to like the look of this one. Excellent. Right, let's find neutral. Easy to find neutral. And the stand, nice and easy to put down. Little clock on here, inspired by the Ducati Scrambler, I sense. I mean, it looks very similar. It's got a fuel gauge, it's even got a rev counter around the outside, temperature gauge, everything you need, digital speedo. All right, let's show you this uh, fantastic looking little machine then. And uh, in the usual way, let me get my phone out to give you a better look. Okay, let's give you a view on the phone. So here she is then, the Mondial Hipster 125. I told you it was a good looking little bike, didn't I? Now this machine is entirely built in Italy, uh, and in fact the engine is a, I think it's a Piaggio engine, but it's built in a factory that uh, makes the Aprilia 125, so it's got a pretty good pedigree in terms of its manufacturing. And just look at the, the way this thing looks, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we'll go through some of the details in a minute, but just to give you some of the specs of it. So, as I say, it's a 125 uh, machine. It's a single cylinder, 10.5 newton metres of torque, and about 13.5 horsepower. So, it's not going to win any speed records, but you don't buy these records, these bikes, sorry, for speed. You buy them because they just look damn good. It's got a 9 litre fuel tank, it's got a 6 speed gearbox. Uh, brakes look pretty special at the front. If we have a look at this disc, it looks like something off of a, off of a mountain bike. Uh, but it's actually got uh, four pot calibers, I believe, yep. So the brakes are quite uh, quite serious on it. Seat height is 785 millimetres, so very, very low. And it's dry weight, which is one of the things I love about it, is only 130 kilograms. So first thing you notice when you sit on the thing is how light it feels. It's just like a bicycle. It's got upside down forks as you can see and maybe the best thing about it is the cost on the road 3,399 so an absolute bargain I think it's about 1,500 pounds cheaper than a Yamaha 125 and uh, just compare how the things look so let's just check out some of the details so it's got this incredible leather seat that looks really nice it comes in a couple of colours, this bike, by the way. There's a version that has a brown seat, but that looks good to me. It's got these uh, amazing bar and mirrors that work a treat, and the matching red grips. I've already mentioned the little uh, instrument cluster, which is really neat. The front end, it's got this doozy little headlight, and some tiny little indicators that look super cool. And there's the, uh, the engine, as I say out of the Piaggio but built at the Aprilia factory so don't know what you think about Italian machines but uh, I see no reason why that shouldn't be super reliable and this amazing little exhaust that they've uh, factored looks absolutely brilliant sadly it's Euro 4 compliant so it sounds a bit like a sewing machine out of the box but I'm sure if you're a bit of a dab hand with spanners you could sort out the massive box at the bottom there and make the thing sound a little bit better but it really does look the business. All right, let's jump on and ride her some more. Okie dokie. Amazing when you jump on and just pull her off the stand. It just feels so light. 
it's really cool on that front I love light bikes okay let's start her up then actually doesn't sound too bad I mean those pipes look amazing but uh, sadly because of uh, Euro 4 they do have to keep the thing quite quiet but as I say I'm sure somebody with a bit of know-how could make some noise out of this right so so much for how she looks how does she ride well stick around and I'll tell you well first thing is riding position actually is quite sporty I mean you are you are sat upright so it's comfortable and very wide bars but your feet are tucked up quite high so it does give you that sort of sporty feel although you know let's not kill ourselves it's a 125 so it's not sporty but that engine spins up very quickly and obviously you have to work your way through the gearbox quite pronto but actually rides absolutely fine the seat's quite hard but it's not uncomfortable, it's sculpted quite nicely it's got these massive bar end mirrors that uh, work a treat and I'm not seeing any vibration through those which is often the issue with these uh, single cylinder machines Now don't be alarmed, I've got the speedo set on kilometres an hour at the moment. I'm not actually doing 70 miles an hour through here. Now the little speedo works a treat actually, it's pretty clear. It's got everything you need, including a rev counter, which uh, I'm quite surprised it's got actually. So I'm in top gear now, and we're cruising along here at uh, 75 kilometres an hour, so 50 miles an hour absolutely uh, feels fine this would be the absolutely ideal commuter bike if you're doing mainly riding in towns why would you buy a Yamaha 125 when you could have something as cool as this so I mentioned that uh, Mondial was a one of the older bike manufacturers in Italy but they're obviously trying to make a big go of coming back they make this model in two colours now, the 125, and there's uh, plans to bring a 250 to market as well. So it's worth checking out their website. And if you want to have a look at one of the flesh, they're just starting to come into the existing Royal Enfield dealer uh, network. So you can go and have a look at one there. But as I say, this is the first one ridden in the country, so it's a really exclusive for me. So thanks a million to uh, the guys at the Motorbike Man in uh, Watford for letting me ride the bike. It's so light and agile, the handling on it is really lovely. Really wide handlebars, nice lot of leverage, completely friendly to ride. As a first bike or a bike to learn on, this would be absolutely brilliant. Or indeed, just a bike to have in your garage for nipping into town when it's a busy day. So just check, there's nothing behind, just going to check the rear brake. Yep, the rear brake's perfectly alright. Whoops, get the right gear. Right, let's turn around here, see what she's like, returning circle point of view. Front brake works absolutely fine. Given it's a new bike and they're not bedded in yet, there's plenty of uh, stopping power there. Right, I'm going to go all the way around this roundabout. That always fools people, doesn't it? Let's uh, hope it doesn't this time. Turning circle is brilliant, as you'd imagine. box is absolutely fine it's a positive gear change and it's very easy to find neutral as well which is a nice nice change often on bikes much more expensive bikes than this it could be a real trial I find to find neutral but this is okay the suspension I suppose you would uh, describe it as firm which I guess accounts for why the handling is so good but it's not you know it's not sort of jarring or rigid it's not uncomfortable These bar end mirrors work really well, no vibrations as I say. I guess uh, you could have them pointed inboard as well as outboard. I might go for inboard because I think when they're out like that, if you want to get into a filtering situation, 
they're going to make the bike quite wide and the handlebars are quite wide anyway so inboard might be better for the mirrors but uh, obviously you wouldn't see quite so well out of them the build quality on the machine looks absolutely great I mean the switch gear looks to be as good a quality as anything else I've seen and I can't see any dodgy welds or anything like that the materials used look to be good quality for three and a half thousand pounds I really don't know how these manufacturers make a lot of money now there's a lot of uh, snobbery isn't there about uh, having the biggest and best bike but uh, I've said it many times before particularly to Mrs Flyer that biggest isn't always best and um, this is demonstrated again with this little bike it's just great fun super light very easy to ride and a lot of laughs comfortable as well you can sit dead upright and uh, if you want to and I think I could ride on this for a couple of hours no problem I mean let's not fool ourselves it's not a motorway machine it's not something you're gonna be riding too up with a headwind uphill but if you want to get around town I don't think there's any more fun ways and certainly this is be one of the cheaper ways as well well what a lovely day for uh, riding around on a new motorcycle must just take this opportunity to thank uh, the two Steves at the motorcycle man in Watford which is actually the local Royal Enfield dealer I've mentioned before but uh, if you've not been down here it's a fantastic showroom pop down say hello to the guys you have free coffee on the go so you can get yourself warmed up as well if you need an excuse so a quick summary then on the Mondial Hipster 125 well as you can tell I love it it's so easy to ride it's just a, a hoot it's got a fantastic looking build quality it's a really cool looking machine as you saw and I really there's nothing about riding it that I can say that I don't like uh, I mean obviously it's not a powerful bike I guess the only downside is it could do with a bit more noise out of the single cylinder but that's just me being silly and I, and I imagine that's easily remedied but everything works nicely the brakes work well the handling is surprisingly good it feels like a bicycle when you're on it it's going to be super cheap to run gearbox is lovely and snickable clutch is light brakes work well mirrors work well you know what is there not to like so uh, if you're in the market for one of these things or you know a 125 I do urge you don't just stay safe and stick with the Hondas and the Yamahas because you're going to be spending more money than you actually need to and you could have something as cool looking as this okay hope that's been of interest look forward to speaking to you next time until then this has been the Missenden Flyer cheerio